Hi, welcome, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophia Pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue our exploration in this three character Chinese expressions in November. All right, today we continue with Xia. Yesterday we talked about Jie Pan Xia, which is the buyer of stock price at the stock high point, stock price high point. So, you know, that's kind of <laughs> the kind of a Xia, the, the knight, the savior, you know, the savior of the situation of whoever get locked in that high ground, now somebody else take over, buy at a higher price, then that's kind of a, the, the savior, uh, relieve you from the burden of you know paying the higher price. Um, and today we have a similar, but you know, different concept, but uh, with with a xia in a similar way of it's as if it's a it's a savior to a certain situation. Um, bei guo xia. Okay, so wonk guo. Now it's almost like a representation of a Chinese way of cooking, right? That's the classical Chinese cookware. Wonk. That's kind of a half dome shape. Not a fully half dome, but at least like a quarter of the sphere of the of this shape. And it turned out a wonk is quite versatile. That's why like stir fry in Chinese so tastes so good. Uh, but bei guo xia means somebody is carrying the wonk on the back. And that's the kind of knighthood we're talking about um, in um, in the contemporary living context. Bei uh, Xia means somebody who is a scapegoat of, of a bad situation. So something bad happened and somebody else's finger point at this knight. And this knight was, you know, came up as Bei Guoxia, where he's carrying the, the wonk. So the wonk uh, symbolized is a, symbol for the uh, the blame. So whoever is carrying the wonk is carrying the blame. Um, okay, but we have the meat symbol, which is kind of like a big question mark with two stripes inside. That's a Chinese way to depict the textured meat piece. And I guess this kind of question mark shape was commonly seen uh, how, how, how the meat uh, when it's freshly cut, how that will look like. Um, just, <laughs> I don't have enough experience to say if from a butcher's point of view, if uh, a piece of meat would most likely look like that shape. Uh, but that's how Chinese language always depict the meat in this big question mark shape. Okay, and then the top, uh, pronounced as bei, and, um, it, obviously, it's a sound symbol, uh, sound maker. Uh, but I always think sound maker is not randomly picked, not because they sound like that. Therefore, it's pulled into the creation of this character. No, sound maker it carry over. They carry meaning as well. Um, and because as you can see, the meat symbol, um, meat um, is the meaning maker. It's a more carry the essential meaning of it because. Um, Bei is the noun form pronunciation, which is falling toe, which is the back. The back is part of the body, right? So all the major body parts in Chinese character would have something with this meat symbol because we're talking about a body part and the body is covered <laughs> the outside, at least that you, you're covered with this meat part. So but when you see this <clears throat> sign, that means something related to body parts often. And um, bei then is more classified as um, the sound maker uh, because essentially this is this body part is the, the essence or the, the category or the classification of the thing, the back when we're talking about. Therefore, this is the sound maker. And because besides it, it does sound like bei, right? Which is absurd tone. So bei, then when, when it's a noun form, it's the falling tone, um, that means the back. And this back came from this image of this back-to-back -back person. So we know this is the ancient Chinese person sign. So when you have, it's like a symmetrical, like a mirror image symmetrically to the other side. So this is the back side of the person. So here is kind of back to back um, in this image. So when we're you know, pointing the direction of this back to back, 
and then have the the meat sign that means the back that means the uh, the body part that is that is used in the back to back position <laughs> and that is the back itself okay it sounds a little bit wordy but i hope it makes sense so it's the body part the back and then when we say carry that means something you carry on your back we talk we use uh, we use the noun, the location of where you carry it as the, the action, the carry itself. And when it, it turns from a noun, which is bay, uh, the back, the, the body parts, into the action, the verb, uh, bay, that turns into um, flat tone. So sometimes when Chinese transform in English as well, right? There are some nouns that can be used as a verb. They sometimes sound the same, sometimes change their emphasis as well. Um, but um, Chinese use this tonal saying to signify, oh, bait is the noun. We're talking about the back, the location. Now, when it's bait, that means using the back to carry something. So that's bait and walk, okay. Guo simply is, well, this is not exactly guo because somehow, I mean, sometimes some character, even if, I mean, wonk was a universally known now in the uh, English speaking world as the cookware from China, uh, China Chinese kitchen. Um, but in ancient times, probably like a daily cookware, um, there was like nothing special about it. So the language um, compiler, back in history, probably a thousand years ago, who compiled, gather all the language characters which uh, still survived till then, didn't really collect this everyday word. Um, probably because it's so everyday, he would assume like people always know about it, um, but somehow this was uh, not in the dictionary back then. So now thousand years past, we have to make a guess again what it is, uh, but okay. You can see the left side here is actually the contemporary simplified Chinese right side. So they look somewhat different, but similar as well. So let's look at the ancient classical uh, because this is simplified version. It, um, during the simplification process, so much information got omitted, ignored, you know, left out. So it's hard to really see by this abstraction form what that is. So let's go to the original form, which I mean, well, original, in comparison to 2023, back then, that was not the original, original, original. <laughs> there are evolutions of words. So I'm using probably, you can see these are um, from uh, whoever the, the dictionary maker back then, thousands of years ago. Um, so that was still preserved the original visual elements back then. This looks just like a pot on a stove, right? It's tripod, and this is the chamber for fire, and this pot thing sitting on top of that with a lid. How visually do you want it to be more specific to depict it is actually the cookware on the stove, okay? Uh, of course, they didn't describe the half dome thing. So I guess half dome was also a technology evolved later on that Chinese settled on the shape of cookware um, and then used this character to, to, to match onto this cookware. Originally, it may not be, you know, came with that shape exact. Okay, the left side here is, uh, is metal. So that means that cookware was made of metal versus here on this part, I don't exactly know that what, what, what that thing is. Uh, it could be a weapon. It could be something related to uh, walking. Uh, we don't know. This is uh, some embedded in uh, another ancient word that looks kind of similar to this. So it was borrowed over here. Okay, walk, carry the walk. Walk means blame. So whoever carry the blame and people regard him. I mean, also lovingly and jokingly uh, label that person, at least with a good name, right? It's not just a regular person or stupid person. It's a, somebody who is novel enough to carry everybody's blame and re people regard that's knighthood, okay? Um, so xia have this person symbol is two legs standing being, and as we talk about over here, uh, so this is regarded the backside and this 
it's the front side. So this is kind of a side view of that person as well. I guess if it's a side view, then this, it doesn't mean um, two legs. This means the front of the body, the back of the body. It's hard to say. Okay, night. Uh, the right side is jia, means clutch. And it gives you the visual of the frontal, <laughs> full frontal view of that person standing. This is two leg, long torso, arms spread under, right under the armpit. <laughs> It, it gives you the space and emphasize the, the um, drawing your attention to right under the arm. I mean, it could be armpit, um, something external under the armpit, or I don't know, it could be the hair under the armpit. Who knows? But it's drawing your attention to the position under armpit. And I guess in ancient times, there were such practice of you carry something around under the armpit. And somehow that action of clutch something under armpit paired with the person symbol becomes this particular type of person who are kind of altruistic, um, benefit the community, probably at their own sacrifice, that kind of person. So knighthood. I mean, knighthood was Western concept about the Chinese map, the xia, this, this word to it. So xia, first off, is an individual. Think on their own. Um, doesn't really, you know, serve the need to be a servant to the master or emperor or whoever is the, you know, the power, the guy in power. No, that person is an individual oper operating, you know, self-agent person and have a certain capacity to defend the weak. So in that sense, it's it's similar to the knighthood in the West. So I guess that's why this Chinese xia was mapped over there. Mm -hmm. So so I don't know why this clutching thing uh, with a person, like a person who clutch uh, means knighthood. I, I don't know, that, that historical context was lost and nobody ever explained why. Um, so Bei Guo Xia was sad. I mean, it means scapegoat, right? So this is a kind of meme uh, in Chinese community and you can see 这个锅我背了, kind of, you know, feeling not exactly empowerment, but feeling um, you are carrying the weight, the blame for the whole group or, or some situation, not of your own fault, but you're carrying every blame onto your back. And you can see this is the wonk, right? The hand of the wonk. And um, 这个锅, so Chinese again can use this guo in another con uh, in another <coughs> expression, but it means the same. It means the blame. So this blame I'm going to carry. So that's the you know heroic um, action uh, uh, that this this I this mean this this uh, uh, graph looks like. And uh, Bei Guoxia is exactly. Uh, person like that. And uh, according to um, whoever study uh, or know a little bit of a contemporary Chinese, the Fei Guoxia came from the gaming arena. So in gaming battling situation, uh, the two teams, right? So the, the, the team who lost would uh, have this, you know, uh, the, the, the review of the game and then blame one particular team member as you know, because of so and so um, that they lost, right? Nobody wants to say they are not uh, good enough, but they want to point finger at uh, one of the team members, and then this team member then will be uh, set to be the Bei Guoxia for the whole team. Um, okay, so that's Bei Guoxia. Catch you in the thinking. Bye. One word a day. Wait, so we'll see you another day.